Welcome back everyone, my name is Altamar and we are going to be continuing our Let's Play of Disco Elysium. Where we left off last time, we were pretty much out of things to do, honestly. We've done a little doors, there are a couple quests we can't finish up, I think maybe we've bugged them out or something along those lines, but it is now time to go deal with Ruby slash whatever's down that tunnel where we can't come back from it says. Um, there's really nothing else that I can think of that we can do. If we look at our journal, we've done pretty much everything. Where's the rest of the armor? We can't finish that. Don't know how to ask the guy about the armor. He won't talk about it. Tattoos, same sort of thing. No one wants to talk about them. Uh, the figurines for Dolores Day. I don't really know how that actually works. Uh, determine where the shot came from. I can't get to the island and I don't know why. Not a big deal though. Uh, Ruby on the coast. We have entered the cavern below the felt building when we're ready. Uh, Union and cryptozoology business might end when you do this. So we've already done the cryptozoology business, and we've done the union business, so we're good on that. We're not going to do uh, anything else, I believe, so let's head out. We've talked to everyone about everything. Some things aren't checked off on our lists, but that's just the reality of a sort of complicated quest-driven game like this. Sometimes they get locked off because you don't do them in a certain amount of time, or conversation paths uh, vanish on different days or whatever. So realistically, this was our first playthrough, so can't be expected for everything to work out exactly the way you hope it will. So let's find ourselves a way in again. I think it's over here on the ground level. Somewhere over this way, I believe it is. Is it up from here? Which building was it in again? I think it was this building up here. Over this way. Yeah, there it is. Perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. And we're gonna go in. Let's see what happens. We have a couple of... Ex actually, you know what? We have a lot of thoughts we haven't actually finished yet. Or two thoughts we haven't finished yet, unfortunately. But we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll finish as we continue on our way. We also have a couple skill points if we need them for different checks we have. How many skill points do we have? We have two remaining skill points. Alright. This place is spooky. I do have to say that. Let's go this way. And up over here. We'll save here. Maybe we should hard save here, actually, now that I think about it. I should really focus more on my <laughs> actual saves. Uh, oh well. A concrete pipe buried in sand and dust. Some money? Some more money. Ruby the instigator. Suddenly, your entire body is paralyzed. Aggressive white noise fills your skull. A strange pain like you've never felt before through the static you hear a woman's voice. It's like a thousand radio stations are being blasted into your head all at once, but her words are the only ones you can make out. I know you're feeling pretty uncomfortable right now. Don't move too much or fight it. That'll just make it worse. Says the shadowy figure by the ma or the machine. Can't say it's a pleasure, officer. I was really hoping not to make your acquaintance, but here we are. The voice is coming through the whirlwind of or the voice coming through the whirlwind of pain is not malicious. She doesn't want to hurt you, but she has to. Doesn't wish to hurt you, not according to your ear canals. Wait, no, not even your ear canals. This is going directly into your neural pathways. Cover your ears. Nope, that did not help. And we need to use a med kit. No, buddy, that's not going to help. You can't shield yourself from this. It's an entirely new type of experience. Way worse than all the previous ones. Don't focus on the pain. Focus on your job. Tell her she's under arrest. I yell through the static. You're under arrest. Really now? Check this out. She turns the dial in her hand. Good thing we have a bunch of these things. You're overwhelmed with a new surge of violence static. Like a blood... It feels like a blood vessel exploded in your brain. What's happening to me? I'm using a pale latitude compressor. You and your partner have been caught in its field. You're using one of the devices used to send signals to the pale on me? Wow, check out the big brains on you. You're not entirely wrong. Shh. 13, er, uh, sorry, 136,841. Shh. 3,37,891,303. A pale latitude compressor is used to sort of make the pale more manageable. With a lot of these, you can force a radio signal grid on the pale. 
literally crunched the distance across it. Signals are relayed across a series of repeater stations fixed to buoys. Not a fun job manning those stations. All alone out there in the pale. People lose their minds in just a few years. So, what we are experiencing is a, a concentration of radio waves. He gestures towards something with great effort. Precisely. This is an industrial strength paraboloid. It's meant for forcing dimensions on something that doesn't have them. Needless to say, the frequencies used are out of this world. At the upper limit is the large prime number generator station. It's used specifically for pale latitude compression. That's why you might be hearing some numbers. But you might also hear, or think you're hearing, local radio chatter. She's been holed up here for a while with no one to talk to. Keep her talking. You might just get an opportunity to break loose. How'd you get your hands on this thing? I built it myself. She nods towards her torture device. And she's proud of it too. As she ought to. This is way beyond your abilities. That's illegal. I'm guessing it's patented. But we are beyond that, aren't we? Oh yeah. Way beyond. She studies her death ray and the law officials trapped in it. Have you experienced the compressor yourself? Yeah, I stuck my head in there before using it on you. Seemed like the ethical thing to do. Can't say that I enjoyed it. The field was weaker, but I can imagine what you're going through. Will I stay like this forever? No. Once I shut down the compressor, the pain will end. It may take a few minutes for you to steady yourself, though. It's a bit like walking out of a very confusing dream. More numbers. Terra Callis. Palinara... Ole Omite ni pelvis? Pelvis? Omite ni pelvis mu tudruk. And then a bunch of more numbers. This is all great, but let's talk about the man who was killed. Yeah, let's not talk about that shit. You were hunting me and fell into my trap instead. That's all there is to say about it. So she thinks of, her, thinks of you as hunters, not cops, and of herself merely as prey. Please, could you turn it down so I can ask you something? If you've got something really important to say, you can do it through the white noise. If you're looking for a deal on mattresses, more numbers. Oh, Rosaline, oh, Rosaline, more numbers and stuff. Damn this. The lieutenant clutches his head, grimacing. God damn it. She regards you and Kim with sudden sympathy. Fine. If you really want to talk, I can dial it down. I've also got a gun, by the way. The pain lessens, and she steps reluctantly out of the shadows. She's carrying a two-barrel from her front loader. Remain careful. Well, it doesn't feel much better, but you can form sentences now. Thinking doesn't seem to hurt as much. Just keep her talking, and you'll get through this. How'd you know we were coming? I heard you in the passages, and I've been preparing for quite a while. By hiding bullets under floorboards? So you found my shack, huh? Not surprised. Her tone is bitter. She thinks she's been betrayed. She didn't rat you up, by the way. Isabel, the washerwoman. So nice. She smiles a little smile. That's one knife I didn't want to find in my back. As opposed to the other knife she's finding there now. Hardy, for one. Why well, had the bullet, though? This could have turned out pretty badly for me if you hadn't walked right into 25 bands of ultra-high frequencies. That's her admitting the bullet was an emergency exit. Did you shoot Lully? No, I didn't do it. I only helped stage the lynching, though I doubt that makes much of a difference to you. Who ratted me out, by the way? Was it Titus? No. He, she hesitates. He wouldn't have broken first. You're right. Claudia was the first to share her suspicions. Oh, she smiles sadly. I knew the little kitten had claws, but not like this. But she couldn't have known I was on the coast. How'd you find me? Your first guess wasn't entirely off. Titus and his boys, ma'am, they told us you were on the coast. She pauses, taking it in. Well, fuck, and those guys liked me. I know it. If this is what happens to people whom people like, a dull despair is creeping into her voice. How the fuck did the rest of you get by? Wait, wasn't it you who called me the human can opener? It's not personal. I opened them up. I did, didn't I? And now you've come for me, she scoffs, but fuck them all the same. That did make her forgive them. A little. I do it by... Asking questions, and I have some for you. Like what? She just her grip on a gun. I already told you I didn't do it. A strong moral compass. She still wants the opportunity to make a case for herself. Would you say that Lily was a likable person? I didn't like him. Hardened mercenaries aren't particularly likable types. You don't feel sympathy for mercs? It's hard work. Plenty of broken people who don't come home with that kind of body count. Besides, they're well paid for what they do. There's nothing more personal that you had against him? Perhaps his way with women? You think I was envious of his conquest? Look, pussy's not a problem for me, and definitely not a reason to off someone. 
See her confident gaze, her toned arms. Yeah, she wouldn't have much trouble in the intimacy department. Did you feel protective of the Union? Yeah, sure. I didn't like Wild Pine sending in those foreign hirelings. Me and a fuck ton of other people around here. I hate to be the bearer of bad tidings, but I don't think she's perjuring herself. She didn't hate him, okay? More questions. I'm listening. Do you have an alibi for when Lily was shot? Man, I was with the boys the whole night. I hope they at least bother to impress that upon you. There were ten minutes they couldn't account for. You mean the length of a toilet break? That wouldn't have even been enough time. Hold on, no one takes a fifteen minute leak. Look, fuck you, man. I might have also stopped by the bar. She speaketh truth. Our investigation, I wince from the pain, has shown that fifteen minutes was just enough time to commit the murder. Wow, now I'm curious. Please, please, expl er, please explain. Play pinball much? No, not since I was fourteen, hanging out the only diner in Dardenne. Haven't been into low-risk, no-reward games since moving to the city. Why? There are some pretty mysterious pinball machines in the... In some pretty mysterious rooms in the whirling. Yeah, and probably some ghosts from the time of the suzerain. I'm not really impressed in supernatural... Supernatural mysteries. Wait, what kind of mysteries interest you then? Not murder mysteries either, if that's what you're thinking. She looks you in the eye impassively, making it clear that she's not planning to comment on the matter any further. What about elevators? Do you like elevators? What the fuck do elevators have to do with anything? Do you or don't you? Not particularly. Not even. I grab my head. Quaint old rickety ones? Not really into old shit for old shit's sake. God damn it, the lieutenant grabs his head. Look, there's a secret way from the ground floor to the, of the whirling to the roof. Don't know it, but also, she frowns, studying your face. Evaluating your competence as a police officer. The shot couldn't have come from the roof, or we would have all heard it downstairs. She has a point there. No one mentioned the pain stops from him finishing this or the pain stops him from finishing this sentence. That didn't go super well. You gotta lay on something better for her. You have a gun. Yeah, and where'd you get it? The gun store. What gun store? Trigger Happy Jacks. That doesn't sound like the name of a real store. What did you think? That I'm gonna squeal on my gun supplier? Sorry, I'm not that kind of gal. I see it's a front loader. Do you have another gun somewhere? Sure don't. A breech loader? No. This is such a wipeout. I can't quite tell. What kind of gun is that? A Knockway 80, front loader, two barreled. Not really what you were looking for, I'm guessing. There's other evidence I want to ask you about. Yeah, evidence. You like Classier a lot. I consider her a good friend, yeah. Are you a. girl? Are peeping one of your hobbies? Well, pissing pinball and now peeping. I'm just not following your insinuations, detective. There's a hole in the wall. You can see into Classier's room. I wouldn't blame you if you've. If you want to stare at a pretty girl, I can pick one up at a bar. Or if I want to stare at a pretty girl, I can pick one up at the bar. Or worst case scenario, look at a naughty photo. Where's the time to go skulking around the whirling, drilling holes in walls? So you haven't been watching Classy through a hole in the wall? No, look. She has an effect on people, that je ne sais quoi, that makes it impossible not to look at her when she walks into the room, and very difficult to look away, but travel enough and you realize, for the same reason that she's everyone's type as an object of a desire, she's not irreplaceable. But you wanted to be more than just friends. Oh, so that's where you're going with this. She said you wanted to run away with her. That's a very sentimental way of putting it. We both had pasts, we didn't want to catch up with us, and we both enjoyed listening to music together. Why not go on a road trip? The lieutenant watches her expectantly, occasionally shaking from the pain. Okay, fine, she rolls her eyes. I was into her. Classia was into me too for a time. I know it. We even fooled around once, and yeah, after that I thought maybe we could make a go of it. Classia only said they maybe kissed. Someone is lying here. Wait, Classia said you only kissed. She rolls her eyes again. That's what she wants on the record, so be it. I'm not going to go into details for you to jerk off to later. Seriously, just move on. But I do want details, actually. Cringe from the head-splitting pain. More pain medications. <laughs> Kim, really? Is that blood on the ground before you? Are your ears bleeding? Yeah, really? Okay, then what happened? She rejected me with some wishy-washy bullshit about how she was confused because she felt so close to me and valued my friendship so much and how guilty she felt for leading me on and so on. I knew that wasn't the whole story, but the thought, or but thought, fine, I'll take it and move on. No ill will there, it wasn't a problem for her. Are you a girl like her? What the hell, man, she laughs. Yeah, why not, I've gotten worse. Her hand slipped from the dial of the compressor for a moment, almost turning it down, then she put her hand back. Not yet, not yet. Clausia said you got very angry with her when she started stealing, stealing Lely. You threatened her. Yeah, one time when we'd both been drinking, I said some heated things about how dangerous her patterns with men were. I was a little worried she'd blow it out of proportion in her head. All the drugs she was doing can make you feel like you're living in a DeLorean tragedy. By the way, DeLorean tragedies are still held in high regard for innovation in language and motifs. They're also known for overwrought emotions leading to catastrophic outcomes. And despite everything, you helped her by staging the lynching? Yeah, the girl seemed terrified. The Merc was beyond caring what happened to his mortal coil. That was a no-brainer. 
I got other things to ask. Go ahead, it's your body. And mine too, he thinks, but keep on, this must be done. Do you like to hang out on rooftops? Who doesn't? Oh, you probably mean Claudia's rooftop. Sure, I've hung out there. She's got this great antenna. Is that the only reason you hung up on the roof? Hung out on the roof? The view is pretty bomb too, but you might say the antenna was the main attraction there, yeah, along with Classier. What's so great about her antenna? It's very powerful. I used it to tune into some RCM frequencies. That's how I need to be prepared for your arrival. The compressor says another number come in. So you're sure you didn't shoot the Merc from the roof? Yeah, I'm sure. And anyways, as I said before, the shot had to come from afar. Okay, let's take a step back. Yeah, where? More and more questions before doing anything. We're at 72%. Who killed the Merc if it wasn't you? How should I know? As I keep saying, he already had a bullet in his head when I got to him, and there hasn't been any useful gossip over the radio. Those rings around her eyes, her tired voice, she's been staying up late listening in on conversations crisscrossing Martin is. Police radio? You've been following the case? Who hasn't? She shrugs. You know I can still see him there, in Clausia's room lying on his side. He was still warm, but the bluish light coming through the broken window made him look as though he'd been dead for a good long while. What happened that night? Tell me your version. She eyes you warily, as though gauging your sincerity. It's okay, we just want to... He tries to finish the sentence. Alright, don't kill yourself over it. I was shooting the shit with Hardy and the boys over a few beers, like always. Then Claustier comes in, all pale and shuddering. She sits down with a drink, trying to steady her nerves, so I grab a seat beside her. Wait, did she also seem high to you? Oh yeah, super. But I didn't think much of it at first. I'd seen her party hard before. This woman has seen people OD. Claustier wasn't quite there yet, so why worry? Claustier said you knew something was wrong immediately. No, I really didn't. She's not that easy to read, I just assumed she'd done too much blow. It wouldn't be the first for her, but no such luck, she was in some deep shit. She asked me to come upstairs, the merc she'd been going with was lying on the bedroom floor, dead. I knew she couldn't get the authorities involved, so yeah. So you made it look like you'd been hanged. Clausia said you seemed to have a plan prepared when you got there. What? No, faking a lynching was her idea. Her idea? Yeah. In cold blood, it really surprised me how quickly she was able to get a hold of herself once we got up there. It was like she was another person, the party girl was gone. She asked me to help her drag him into the shower so she could wind the shower head around his neck to fake lividity. Then she dressed him while I went to get the Hardy Boys. She lied to you about that too. That's bad that she'd be so calm. Yeah, I wasn't sure whether to admire her or be disturbed. Do you think she killed Lily herself? As I keep telling you, cops, we didn't hear anything downstairs. No gunshot, nothing. But even if the, is, this is true, the lieutenant forces himself to finish the sentence, weren't you worried this lynching might lead to... War? She perse er, purses her lips. The thought crossed my mind, but the mercenary's death was going to have repercussions either way, although the way things are going. She doesn't want to talk about this, but not because she has something to hide. She doesn't want the guilt. She shrugs. Eh, fuck it. I'm not responsible for those people after what they did to me. If you didn't kill them, why hide? I saw you roll into town. I wasn't able to stick around for questioning by goddamn la puta madre agent. So this is what she was scared to tell Titus. This cop. This cop. What do you mean, La Putra Madre agent? She looks at you quizzically. Yes, you. Everyone says you're his peon. Peony? His human can opener. Through the sudden sharp pain in your head, you can feel the lieutenant mumble something to himself. Fucking hell, and why me, you hear through the white noise. It's especially bad suddenly. Felt like a vein exploded. Who's everyone? How do you know this? Everyone in Jamrock, the cops, the criminals. Why do you think I'm holed up here with a goddamn death ray waiting for you? If she knows that about you, she must know your real name, too. Tell me, what's my name? If you know that about me, you must know my name. Harry Dubois, she replies quickly. One corrupt motherfucker with the disco pants and the funny tie. Agent de la putra madre. So if she knows your name, that doesn't mean you're on the take. Criminals make up boogeyman stories about cops all the time. I'm no one's agent. I don't even know who la putra madre is. Right, sure, you don't know. I'm sure I'm supposed to know, but I lost my memory recently. Yeah, sure, she doesn't believe you. I'm sure la putra madre himself will explain it. All to you soon enough. So why did you do this mod- or what did you do to this madre anyways? You know what I did. I fucked him over, she pauses, and now I have Harry can opener in my lair fucking Titus. She's not gonna change her mind that easily. She still perceives you as a threat. Wait, one thing, possibly small, but she said you rolled into town. Was that you singular or plural? She might know something. When I came into town, was there anyone with me? Yeah, you had your death squad with you. What happened to them anyways? Who is in this squad? Well, it wasn't the scrawny dude, she nods towards the lieutenant. You had two guys and a lady. The guys looked pretty buff. Lady wasn't bad either. What else can you tell me? One of the guys seemed chipper, a blonde. The other had a brooding or something or other about him. And, he, and the woman? The woman was, only one, or was the only one in uniform. All were carrying. She narrows her eyes. That sound about right? No idea who those people are, literally. No, that doesn't ring any bells. 
Well, this has been a great talk, really, but I'm gonna hit the road now. She means it. You better make your move soon. Let's try it. I don't know if we did it or not, or if we're dead. We failed. The violent white noise becomes even more overwhelming closer to the compressor. It feels like your brain is swelling up in your skull. Hold still and try and have an, ap an apocalyptic vision. We're okay. Officer, are you okay? Don't worry, Cam. I'm just, just trying to have an apocalyptic vision. The pain intensifies as your hands attempt to reach out into the pale chaos. What are you doing? I told you it's best not to move. More numbers for that special someone. Just try not to collapse. Look, I know this isn't very fun for you. So let's just wrap this up. You have a tribunal to attend. Tribunal? He said something about a tribunal? She sighs. Yeah, the mercenaries are about to set up a tribunal and execute someone for killing Lely. How do you know this? I was listening in on their frequency. She pauses, biting her lip. Even though those assholes gave me up and worried for the boys. And you, watch out for yourselves. You seem to have a habit of walking into traps. They're planning to set up a trap for us? I'm guessing you don't know that a third mercenary has come to town just in time for the tribunal. And now you do. Three mercenaries, no doubt armed to the teeth, hungry for vengeance. You've only got muzzle loaders. This isn't looking good. A third. Oh, this is bad. She nods. As I said, watch out. The pain is becoming unbearable now. Do you know about the bunker next door? What bunker? The communist hideout back there. Don't know anything about it. No one's been around since I set up camp, but I'm sure I'm not the first vagabond to. Her voice trails off into the white noise in your head. It feels like an aneurysm approaching. Can't take any more. Just go. Glad to have been of assistance. She tosses her head back to finally and turns down the machine. Best of luck to you, officers. Revishol's a bitch. The woman runs past you and disappears into the darkness of the tunnel. We use all of our med stuff, which is fine. All things considered, the lieutenant is still reeling from the pain. That could have gone worse. Wait, shouldn't we go after her? No, I don't think she did it. She's someone else's case now. What now? Now we have to come up with a really good excuse for why we walked right into a trap like that. This isn't going to look good in the report. He looks around and then points further into the cavern. Her tent. Maybe there's something in there. Damn, that was... That was intense. It's, it's kind of a nice little place in here. Very secluded. Found some more drugs. Which is good, because we need them. Cooking utensils. She's prepared, her, or prepared, she's prepared herself porridge with bananas. Lovely. Eight dollars. Some sort of thing out there. Dark water trails into the distance. There is no way out. This plain red tent stands by dispassionately. Look inside. The tent looks old, but well maintained. In the darkness of the tent, a rolled up sleeping bag, cooking utensils, some books, and a kerosene lamp. It reeks of cigarettes. Flashlight on the books. Assorted soft covers, mostly pulp horror. A motor carriage lies buried in the snow on one cover. On another, a ghost airship. You also see a collection of radio enthusiast magazines. The lieutenant peeks over in your, peeks over or peeks in over your shoulder. See anything? I sift through the magazines. Riga Monthly, Journal of Material Science, more technological digest. One of the magazines doesn't have images on the cover. It's not a magazine, it's a leather notebook. Take that. You pocket the worn brown leather journal. We should read this immediately, like right now. Okie dokie. A thick journal. The cover is worn like someone used to carry it around in their back pocket. Examine the cover. It's made of full grain leather. The lower left corner of the back cover sports an embossed brand name, Schneller. Schneller is a stationary brand from Gottwald, beloved among architects and engineers. She's got good taste and must have taken whatever she recorded here seriously. Let's unwind this trap. The journal falls open. About two thirds of its ruled pages have been filled. Study the handwriting. The large cursive of someone who writes quickly and confidently. Perhaps too confidently. Many phrases and even paragraphs that have been crossed out with tiny corrections scrawled above and in the margins. Flip through the pages. It's a mix of logistical notes, diagrams, and personal reflections, all dated. It's good she left in a hurry. We can learn a lot from this. What kind of logistics? Hard to tell exactly. It's mostly noted down in code. Looks like contact information, quantities, directions. There could be useful information about local operations in those notes. We have a junior sergeant at my station who's good with codes. I can give this to her after we finish this. What are the diagrams of? Esoteric radio technology. The most recent ones probably pertain to the latitude compressor. Sketches, calculations of distance and density. You make out a familiar spiral shape. Anything personal? Short wry observations of people and places. Probably a way to pass the time on the road. Also would appear to be attempts to sort through some difficult questions. There are a few passages with many questions in them. The way that some of those question marks trail off into ellipses. She was going through a tough time. 
How far back do they go? The first entry is from August 2nd of last year. It simply reads, I know my position is precarious. All I can do is make myself as useful as I can while looking for a way out. Remember, no one is indispensable. What the day Lily died? Nothing on March 4th. March 5th, though. Well, that's bound to come back and bite me in the ass. I'm bad at this loyal to a fault. Except, but that's another matter entirely. You have no idea what she means. These are personal notes. I don't expect to understand all of it. Anything about La Puta Madre? Or Puta Madre? The name isn't mentioned as far as you can tell. Small wonder. Would you talk about La Puta Madre in your journal? You do see an M, though. La Puta Madre? M is mentioned on March 9th and 15th. Oh, no, it's March 9th. Great. M's Pione, or Pione, is coming to town. No doubt to investigate the lynching, but also I feel it my gut to finally put a bullet in my head. While I'm napping on my, it on my lorry or on a smoke break, well, I won't stick around just to twist my own neck by constantly looking over my shoulder. Then again, isn't that what I've been doing ever since I got the call? The call? Did M call her personally? Why? About the 12th been holed up here for three days now. I'm used to being alone and all, but I don't know when I'll be able to leave or if I'll be ratted out. They will rat me out, of course. I've made it a point to believe in the best in people, the boys for example, but experience tells me. Did M tr feel truly betrayed by me? I was feeling threatened. He'd have to know that if he threatened people, they take measures to protect themselves. Even I know that. Economic measures, first of all, gotta make a living, right? I can still hear his voice in the receiver. Taste of plastic. The entry ends abruptly. That must have been one hell of a conversation most recent one. The most recent entry is from today. It reads, Even when I leave here, if I leave here alive, what's my next move? Staging a lynching is a crime. Even if I'm not accused of murder on top of that, forever on the run? Not really my idea of the open road. Man, I was really looking forward to winning. Lieutenant taps on the page. It looks like she might have been framed? Kim, am I really a Laputa Madre agent? He looks you straight in the eye for a moment, then sighs. No, I don't think you are. Ask someone in your precinct if you want to be sure. Who is Laputa Madre? The head of a major jam rock gang specializing in drug production and trafficking. A very bad person. He's not 100% sure you're not indebted to this very, very bad person. If she didn't do it, then maybe it's good she, we didn't catch her. I wouldn't go so far as to say that we have other reasons to arrest her. Besides, I'm not sure her life as a fugitive is going to be much better than with us, especially if she has problems with the Madre. Then who do you think killed the Merc? Classe was the one who pointed the finger at Ruby. Perhaps she was trying to steer us away from herself, or he stops to think... But no one heard the shot. Maybe she had an accomplice. Either way, we need to keep an eye on her. One thing is for certain, we have business back at the whirling in rags. Questions to ask. Let's be careful, though. The tip she gave us about the tribunal was disturbing. Well, that was quite the twist. Things are afoot now, and things we can't go back on. Ruby did escape because we flubbed our 72% roll, as is normal. And we have to hopefully not die. Maybe I should have had my sword out. I wonder if the sword would have helped. Rather than this particular tool. I wonder if we would have got shot if we'd broken the machine, actually. She did have a front-loading gun. Like a double-barreled shotgun type thing. Anyways, we're at 28 minutes, so we're going to end here. In the next video, uh, we're going to go back to the whirling, I guess, and see what we can figure out about this tribunal. Hopefully not die. That would be... For the best. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Take care.